Welcome to my channel, Ateno Gola the Lawyer, Karibumi Sana. And today for Mentorship Wednesday, I have with me Jeremiah Rogito, and he is the CEO of AgriPanda Consult Limited and also the project advisor for SNV, Netherlands Development Organization. He's going to be talking to us about agribusiness and the field of agri agriculture. Yes, and if you enjoy the video, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, Jeremiah, for agreeing to have this interview with me. Thank you so much. Yeah, so maybe first we could now talk about yourself. You could introduce yourself to my viewers, what you do in the various capacities, and also your career journey, how you've been able to reach where you are right now. Yeah, thank you so much for taking your time to interview me. I've been following your uh, previous videos, and I must say mm -hmm. they have been powerful. I've thank been interviewing you. very serious people. Mm -hmm. And for me to be here, it's indeed a honor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my, my name is Rogito, also known as Jeremiah. I work with SNV, Netherlands Development Organization, as a project advisor for a project we are calling Veggies for Planet and People that mainly works with youth and women in Kenya and Ethiopia. We're implementing this project in partnership with the World Vegetable Center. So I advise the project mainly in Kenya and specifically concentrated around Western and Nyanza regions of Kenya. I also work with AgriPanda. Concert Limited as the Chief Executive Officer. And I currently also work with Equatorial Outreach as a board member for Partnerships, Innovation and Strategy, which is my previous employer. Okay. My professional journey? Yes, yes. Yeah, I was born in Kitale. For those who know, Kitale is in Transoya County, western part of Kenya. And uh, mm -hmm. Transoya is a rich agricultural region, mainly known because of maize. I'm also lucky because my parents have a rich agricultural background. They both studied agriculture at university level. But growing up, they, they were not in full-time employment, so they were actually farmers. And uh, something unique about them is that their farming was not the mainstream farming that we expect in Transoya County. Okay. The growing of maize, I would see them grow mm -hmm. crops that were a bit odd to the people at that time. In fact, we owned one of the largest passion fruit nurseries at that time. Mm -hmm. So I began developing an interest in farming at a very young age. Mm -hmm. I remember we used to be called kweka mchanga, we call it in Swahili kweka mchanga kwa tubes for the nurseries. And at that time, I was not being paid. My pay was to take the, my dad's phone at that time and play Space Impact or Snake that used to be a very popular game around that time. So mm -hmm. at that time, I continued to develop a lot of interest in agriculture. Spent 10 years in Kitale and I joined high school. Mm -hmm. I was still very passionate about agriculture. They are very active in Young Farmers Organization. I remember serving as the organizing secretary for, for Young Farmers. And you'll understand Young Farmers is an affiliate of ASK. Mm -hmm. This case, Agriculture Societies of Kenya, okay. which basically manages all the showgrounds that we have in this country. So when you hear of any showground, it's managed by ASK, Agriculture Societies of Kenya, and Young Farmers is an affiliate. ASK is not a profit-making institution, but you will know people go to shows in numbers and pay a lot of money. So ASK mm -hmm. makes, a, makes a huge amount of money, but they just find ways to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. So as Young Farmers at that time, we were able to, to make use of that money at that time. <laughs> yeah. So... And I remember also, we hosted the National Tree Planting Day when I served as the organizing secretary for Young Farmers. Mm -hmm. I joined campus to study agriculture. BSc Agriculture in Egerton, I think, is the premier agriculture institution we have in this country. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed. But one, what became my turning point to desire to go into a different line of agriculture, which is agribusiness, is that at one time we were, we were given some land by the university to practice farming. Mm -hmm. And we planted, we did pepper agriculture, you know, there's pepper agriculture and the real thing on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we did the pepper agriculture, we were making millions, but on the farm we, we couldn't make much. Mm -hmm. So I realized it's not just about agriculture, just growing, but we need to focus also on the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So that's what took me to Strathmore University to pursue a Master of Management in Agribusiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also have additional certifications on project management, mm -hmm. but professionally I Began, I did my industrial attachment in AAA Growers, which is a large commercial farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it deals with a lot of crops for export market. Mm -hmm. Then I also 
my very first application, I remember. Mm -hmm. I got that job to work with one organic as a salesperson to sell fertilizer. But unfortunately, three, work, three weeks into working that job, I never sold a single fertilizer. <laughs> and that's how I parted ways with sales. Maybe I should try other things like marketing or such. Okay. Yeah, I've worked with Think Organic Kenya, Weltunga Hilfe, which is a German organization, mm -hmm. Equatorial Hot Fresh, and currently with SNV Netherlands organization. Okay. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's a really rich introduction. Thank you. I'm sure my viewers are now looking forward to understand actually now what um, both your companies uh, do um, in terms of, of course, you say the one for Netherlands, it's working with women and, and, youth. and the youth in the field of agriculture. Sure. Yeah, so maybe you could expound more about that and also um, on the other, it's called the second one? Agripanda concept. Yeah, Agripanda, yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. For SNV, we mainly, it's a vegetable project, as I mentioned, veggies for planet and people. Mm -hmm. So we are promoting regenerative agriculture practices, mm -hmm. practices more aligned to agroecology. Mm -hmm. So less use of chemicals and uh, fertilizers, but more use of inorganic fertilizers. Mm -hmm. We are working mainly with youth and uh, as a result hoping to create employment, which is my personal passion as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, my master's dissertation was on issues of youth in agribusiness. Mm -hmm. For AgriPanda, which is a business, we mainly do consulting. Mm -hmm. And if you've read the agency theory or the law of uh, mm -hmm. reward, minimum reward, mm -hmm. the employee will want to do the least amount of work for the maximum reward. Yes. While the employer will want the employee to do the most yes. amount of work for the least, least reward. For yeah. the least reward. So mm -hmm. for consultants, what they do, they want to use the, loss, the least amount of effort to get maximum reward. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, as we go along talking about agribusiness, we will get to understand there are immense opportunities in agri, mm -hmm. and especially for Equatorial, also where I serve as a director for partnerships and innovation, mm -hmm. where our main crop is passion fruit for local, regional, international market. Mm -hmm. I mean, there there's great potential in agribusiness, which is greatly untapped. Oh wow! Sure. Yeah, as you've said, it's it's greatly untapped. So maybe now you could explain to us what is agribusiness all about? Because I'm sure people are like there is agriculture, then there is business. How do the two merge, and what does it entail? I remember from very from high school we used to be, mm -hmm. and I went into I studied in Saint Joseph Boys High School, Kitale, mm -hmm. at that time, which was the in terms of numbers of students, it was the largest in this country, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I had the opportunity to be taken to an agriculture class. Mm -hmm. And the agriculture class, you go, the agriculture was defined as the art and science of crop and livestock production. Mm -hmm. And agribusiness looks mainly at the business side of mm -hmm. these two things, crops and livestock. Okay. And uh, agribusiness mainly in the, in the recent days, we are looking at it in terms of the entire value chain. Mm -hmm. And in agribusiness, a lot of things. In mm -hmm. terms of crops, there is a wide variety of crops mm -hmm. yeah, that we can talk until the cows come home. <laughs> Even for livestock, there is. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, a number of lives that you mm -hmm. can be able to keep in agribusiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, maybe now we could talk about the role of agribusiness in developing countries because um, one of the major, let me say, outcries of Kenyans, they feel that Kenya is rich, you know, in term, it, it has potential in producing a lot of agricultural products, but we do not see that actually being maximized. So, what is the role of agribusiness in developing countries? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Food is very important. People must eat at all times. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you talk about the basic needs, food is one of them. Mm -hmm. So people at all times must be able to access food mm -hmm. at some point. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the times that we just living through that now COVID, mm -hmm. any country contemplating lockdown must first consider the issue of how their people will be able to access food. Mm -hmm. So we looking at specifically developing countries for Kenya, for instance, mm -hmm. the Agriculture contributes the largest GDP, mm -hmm. yeah, both in terms of mainstream on-farm production and other allied practices like uh, processing and such like. Mm -hmm. Compa Kenya, comparing with the neighboring countries, Kenya has the least amount of arable land for production. Mm -hmm. We're looking at 25% that is available for, mm -hmm. for crop and livestock production, that is agriculture in general. Mm -hmm. Comparing with our neighbors, Uganda and Tanzania, which are playing at 88% and the other 95%. Wow. So, and even for Kenya, you will see most of the arable land now, people are going into setting up high buildings. Yeah. Like areas like Kiambu, which used to do a lot now, it's put on. Mm -hmm. People are settling in those areas. So, yeah. we are having the land that is available for crop production becoming minimal and minimal mm -hmm. as the day goes by. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So it means like maybe now the food that is being produced actually in Kenya can fail to be enough for the population. Absolutely. You've had a lot of times of Kenya mm -hmm. importing food from neighboring countries and also from as far as Mexico sometimes and talking about uh, mm -hmm. maize and South Africa and many countries. So mm -hmm. we've not get to a place that we are completely food sufficient. We're producing enough food to be consumed locally in okay. Kenya. Yeah, although the general perception talking about food in Kenya, we are talking about maize, but the, for a balanced diet, we have a whole list yeah. of crops that need to come into play for you to have a balanced diet. Wow, wow. Yeah. And maybe now, um, what's the place, place of agribusiness actually in the development of our country? Because now you're saying, of course, we are still buying food. And how does agribusiness contribute to the development of, or maybe the GDP of an economy? Yeah. I mean, there, there are so many ways in which uh, agriculture mm -hmm. can come into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, when you're studying, we used to be told that agriculture is one of the largest foreign exchange earners mm -hmm. for a country in terms of earning foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing for any government that is in place is mm -hmm. to ensure that their citizens are food sufficient. Mm -hmm. That is very important mm -hmm. because a healthy nation is a working nation. Mm -hmm. If you cannot yeah. eat, you cannot be able to work. Even yeah. the people who are working on the cameras right now and yourself, if you mm -hmm. have not eaten and yeah. you have no plan of eating after this, then mm -hmm. you, your energy levels will be a bit low. Yeah. So there is a big place that agriculture plays for the development of the country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe now we could talk about how students, especially maybe now in high school, can actually identify their passion in agriculture and turn it into a career. Because you see, at least you were able to identify it earlier. And now what maybe could you be your advice to students who are studying agriculture at the high school level? Mm -hmm. for, for us who work in development world, mm -hmm. we promote a lot of uh, mm -hmm. value chains. Mm -hmm. And I was completely touched one time when I was implementing a USAID program, mm -hmm. working with the Kotoro Hot Fresh. Worked in different roles. I, by the time I was living as a, as a business advisor, mm -hmm. and I remember our office was in Eldoret at that time, Zaburi Business Center. Mm -hmm. And the uh, second senior most person in the organization reporting to the CEO. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a particular youth farmer who would bring his produce each and every single week. Mm -hmm. And this youth farmer would come with, with his own pickup, mm -hmm. come deliver his produce. My office was not far from the accountant, so I could see him get paid. Mm -hmm. His weekly salary was actually my monthly salary. Wow. In fact, if you wanted to calculate my monthly salary at that time, just go and check the peak production of passion fruit how many kilos someone can get, multiply that by 8 or 120 and you get my salary that way. Mm -hmm. But I think there is immense potential in agribusiness. Mm -hmm. w w looking at uh, production, the young mm -hmm. people can be able to tap into production, mm -hmm. specifically for this young person. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of talk around that uh, youth should be more engaged in other sections of value chain, mm -hmm. but I'm a strong defender of youth being involved in production. Because mm -hmm. myself, I'm a farmer and I produce, mm -hmm. and I know if you are in production, you, you almost control the entire value chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless we are producing food in laboratory, mm -hmm. at some point we must get to the farm and get our hands dirty. Yeah. But if we continuously depend on on-farm production, then people must be involved in production. Mm -hmm. You get into the other segment of the value chain, whether it's in input supply, supplying inputs to farmers, mm -hmm. there's great potential in that. Mm -hmm. I remember one time when there was a food shortage in this country, the deputy president said, mm -hmm. what we have in Kenya today is not food shortage, what we have is uh, an issue of distribution. Mm -hmm. And you see that a lot in this country. Mm -hmm. You go to Nyandarwa, they mm -hmm. are producing a lot of horticultural produce. Mm -hmm. The neighboring county of Baringo, there are people who are dying out of hunger yeah. because of hunger, yeah. just in the neighboring count counties. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there is immense potential, specifically in the aspect of distribution, mm -hmm. that the young people can be able to tap in. There is immense potential in marketing. Mm -hmm. I, I said I work for Equatorial Hot Fresh as a director. Mm -hmm. And getting fruits from Eldoret, the farmers deliver them to a collection center at 80 shillings. Mm -hmm. Just getting it to the local market in Nairobi, we're making a profit of up to 30 shillings a kilo, wow. where there's immense potential also in distribution mm -hmm. and marketing for the young people to tap in. Mm -hmm. I mean, in general, the, yeah. across the value chain that you're looking at in agribusiness, young people can be able to tap in so many ways. Yeah, so actually those who study agriculture should not feel like they should only just maybe be involved in um, the production, there are various ways in which they can be involved um, after studying the agriculture, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, we also in consulting. And mm -hmm. consulting is where you use the minimum effort for, for maximum reward. Mm -hmm. So there's also a big uh, opportunity mm -hmm. in there. 
for mm -hmm. for this year specifically talking about agripanda mm -hmm. we we're not taking any more any more assignments of course business has been, has been tough for everyone in this mid, in the midst of covid-19 mm -hmm. but what we are seeing in the market in general in Kenya we have more and more people mm -hmm. being interested in farming oh yeah we have so many people calling us they want to invest in 50 acres 100 acres mm -hmm. and you know investing on on farm production is a, it's quite a tedious process so mm -hmm. We, we have not been so keen on taking such opportunities, but we are seeing those opportunities becoming increasingly more and more. Yeah. So it's something that we are considering also in our strategy as a, mm. as a company. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That is really lovely. I'm enjoying the conversation because honestly, I'm so poor at the knowledge of agriculture. I've never been to an agricultural class, but I think this information is very useful. You know. Um, to help the young people, especially who are the majority and who cry out they don't have jobs to see in the areas they can invest in. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now maybe we could talk about um, the risks uh, associated with investing in agribusiness because um, we hear sometimes people say, you know, they've planted this amount of uh, crops in uh, large acres of land and then all of it goes to waste. So maybe we could advise the be best considering now you're a consultant you will be knowing the best methods of doing agriculture as you're also saying i'm um, with the netherlands um, organization you're trying to minimize the use of uh, chemicals, chemicals yeah definitely. the best ways of actually investing in agribusiness absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. e everything in life is a risk <laughs> if we begin talking about risk you will not invest in anything yeah. you will not do anything in life mm -hmm. even us seated on this chair we are not sure when it when any time it can fall down and we <laughs> We are seated down or yeah. even this ground that we are seated here can open up, can and, open up and swallow us so <laughs> yeah. everything that we do in life is a risk mm -hmm. in fact one of the biggest challenges in agriculture is access to finance mm -hmm. you go to a bank the person that is considered to be of highest risk mm -hmm. highest risk client mm -hmm. is an agricultural person uh -huh. so the the risks in in agri are, are immense the mm -hmm. changing weather patterns no, I, plant, I planted potatoes like uh, a month ago mm -hmm. because I saw there was rainfall that was coming through. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden the rain disappeared. Yeah. I go check in my potatoes after mm -hmm. two or three weeks, they, they have not germinated. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the risk uh, in agri are immense, mm -hmm. but of course what we always challenge people is to diversify. Mm -hmm. you, I, I love passion fruit myself as a crop to grow because I, I see it's high value return. Mm -hmm. But I think I also grow other crops, like I mentioned, potatoes mm -hmm. and vegetables as well. So for you to be able to mitigate the risks in agri, you, it's important for you to be able to diversify. Mm -hmm. Especially if you are using minimal technology and digital innovations, mm -hmm. then there will be immense risks. So it's just for you to be able to diversify and work around that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe now what could you say about the use of chemicals um, in... in um growing crops because I think also that has been a large contributor to maybe some of these diseases that we have. What could be your comment on that? Yeah, that's a very difficult question to ask a young man <laughs> because uh, Why so? one of the biggest companies in these countries are those that deal with seeds and chemicals. Oh, wow. So what I comment here may, may make me not get a job in future. <laughs> but I'll, I'll share my, my personal thoughts, yeah. thoughts around that. Mm -hmm. I mentioned I worked for uh, one of the largest uh, export farms we have in this country. Mm -hmm. AAA has a farm spread across this country and I worked in their, in their largest farm. Mm -hmm. And there was heavy, heavy use of chemicals. Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk much beyond that. Yeah. But based on my life experience, I've worked mainly on issues towards agroecology. Mm -hmm. I think the- What is agroecology? Mainly use of organic farming, what we mentioned, less use of pesticides mm -hmm. and more use, and. Uh, and these organic fertilizers and using more of the common manure that yeah. we that we know. Mm -hmm. Good thing about that is that the soil will be productive for a longer period. Mm -hmm. For use of these chemicals that sometimes you, you need to keep on working on the soil for it to produce mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. But if you use these other mm -hmm. organic farming, the farm produces for a longer time. It produces much healthier crops. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the people that eat foods that are produced in organic ways, mm -hmm. they are much healthier compared yeah, to those sure. who eat in those other ways. Mm -hmm. But as I mentioned, it's, uh, there's, there's always the advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. of it. And depending on which angle you are looking mm -hmm. at it, it will affect which direction you'll take in your crop production system. Wow. Uh, so maybe now we could talk about questions that people should ask themselves before venturing into agribusiness. Because of course you've said there are risks involved. And maybe now, um, should we say that agriculture or agribusiness is for everyone? 
because uh, I think the amount of let me say checking up because I think you usually go to check up on your uh, on your plants yeah. and uh, your plantation generally. So, what would you say about if assessing if whether you are an entrepreneur or not in the field of agribusiness? I, as I mentioned, there is immense potential in agri. Looking mm -hmm. at the entire value chain, mm -hmm. there is a place that each and every person can be able to, okay. to tap into and get the maximum reward. Mm -hmm. It's for you to map out your market, mm -hmm. and especially for SNV, which I work for Netherlands organization. Mm -hmm. One of my biggest roles as a project advisor is to look on issues of markets, mm -hmm. because market is the, is the drive of the value chain. Mm -hmm. it, you know, for those who love football, it doesn't matter how much in Kiswahili you say una cherenga mpira. What matters is the number of goals you're able to deliver. Yeah. In Agri, the number of goals is your ability to be able to sell and yeah. make money out of it. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you have produced very healthy crops in a very organic way, yeah. and the flowers are really flourishing. Yeah. It doesn't matter if yeah. you've not sold and you've made money, then you, you are not in business. So, mm -hmm. Looking at the market, you know, whatever th thing that you're doing, whether it's in consulting, whether it's in people distribution, whether mm -hmm. it's in marketing itself, whether it's in production, first assessing the whatever you want to do from the market side will be of great impact and uh, use for you. Because if you don't do that, you you'll end up crying saying agriculture is high risk and you yeah. don't get any return from it, which yeah. is not true. Yeah, so as you're saying, um, even like let's say for example this season if I plant potatoes, I should be able to assess whether there is market for it in the place that I have planted it or in Nairobi or how do you actually assess the market? Because I think many people don't understand how to do that. Mm -hmm. For my personal experience, we have done a lot of market assessment mm -hmm. using Equatorial Hot Fresh as a, when I worked as a business advisor. Mm -hmm. And uh, most people you cry, they hear they want international market. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sharing my personal thoughts. You may have your own views as well. Okay. So just my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. For international markets, let's take for instance what I'm very proficient in, passion fruit. Mm -hmm. You could get up to 200 or even 300 shillings a kilo. Mm -hmm. We get the produce, the farmer delivers the produce to us at around 80 shillings a kilo. Mm -hmm. You see that margin is so big. Yeah. But for you to be able to deliver even a single kilo of passion fruit to the Belgian market or any European market, mm -hmm. the amount of effort that you will have put in it is, is immense. Mm -hmm. Because uh, for you to get that particular quality to be able to get into the international market, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a, an uphill task. Mm -hmm. But looking at the local market, which I already mentioned, just the farmer delivers into us, we package it in bags and send it to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Huge returns of up to 30 shillings or even more a kilo. What about the African market, considering there is Comesa, Ecoas, and SAD, are you also able to do inter, let me say inter-country, you know, type of uh, sales? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that is, is very possible. And even with the coming up of activities like the African continental free trade area, mm -hmm. it's opening up opportunities for, for African farmers and for Kenyan farmers as well. Mm -hmm. You might be aware that mm -hmm. the majority of the onions consumed in Kenya mm -hmm. are imported from Tanzania. Yeah. 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 So, and many crops that uh, they just keep revolving around. A lot of eggs we have in Kenya coming in from Uganda. Oh. So, eggs. If, yeah. Wow. So, if you're able to map out clearly the markets, and understand what consumers need at what time, mm -hmm. then there is immense potential in agribusiness, mm -hmm. and specifically for anyone who wants to get into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are there like studies which have been done on markets which people can actually assess and be able to look at before they venture into planting different crops? Absolutely. Uh -huh. In this dig digital era, there's a lot that has been written on oh, agri. Okay. So if you just got into the net, you mm -hmm. get a lot of that. Mm -hmm. In Agri Panda, we also do a lot of issues of markets. So mm -hmm. if you got into our site, you'll see we continuously track markets across various various towns in Kenya, major towns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, a lot of organizations are working around the issues of markets. Okay. Even development organizations, if you notice in the recent past, mm -hmm. they they are saying they are moving from aid to trade. Oh, okay. And for you to be tra in trade is the issues of market. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of studies and a lot of things that has been written. If you mm -hmm. walked into any site online, depending on what you want to search, you will get a lot of information mm -hmm. on issues of markets and trend specifically. Wow. I, I feel like there's a light bulb moment. I'm learning so much. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe now we could talk about the issue of greenhouse farming. Um, I had not uh, mentioned it in the questions, but I've, I've, I've thought about it and I've realized many people are venturing into it. Maybe you could now tell us what greenhouse farming is about, um, if all types of crops are suitable for greenhouse farming, 
Yeah, yeah greenhouse farming is a growing interest. There's mm -hmm. a friend of mine who wants to invest in a large land. Mm -hmm. He asked me a few weeks ago to go and assess the land. Mm -hmm. He's already set up 100 acres of potatoes, mm -hmm. setting up another 100. He, went me, he called me to assess a 50 acre of land that he wants to get into agribusiness. Mm -hmm. And one of the places that he has a lot of focus is on the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. I could see while talking to him because I, I wanted us to focus more on the outside, but he wanted to focus really on the greenhouse. And, I, and it's true, there's a lot of immense potential in greenhouse farming. I, I grew up as well. M most of my academic fees got, I, I received from my parents working on, uh, on a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And there are various crops that do well on a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. we, you can do flowers in greenhouse, but for market you need to be very clear on the market of flowers because mm -hmm. you will see the people who are doing greenhouse flower, flower farming mm -hmm. are mainly the big players in this country. Yeah. There is a lot of immense potential doing uh, chilies, mm -hmm. capsicum, that is the correct term I was looking for. Yeah, capsicum. And then also mm -hmm. we can do tomatoes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a whole list of crops that you can be able to do in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Most of the greenhouse as well are used for nursery preparation, nursery production. Mm -hmm. One of the places that you can get a lot of money in any value chain is the issue of seed. Mm -hmm. And so seed going all the way up to seedling, mm -hmm. there is a lot of money that you can be able to get from that. Mm -hmm. So in your nurseries also you can consider that. Mm -hmm. For passion fruit, which I said I'm quite proficient in, mm -hmm. the returns from nurseries is uh, almost double or more from the actual production on farm. Wow. And that is mainly done on a greenhouse. I think I shall stop being a lawyer and but just to be a full-time, eh? you know, farmer. <laughs> yeah, my calling in life is mainly to talk mm -hmm. to young people, mm -hmm. women, mm -hmm. and older people, older people, and older people. Mm. By the time that we finish talking, even if it's five minutes that you are challenged to, to grow something, yeah. even if it's one uh, vegetable, one skuma wiki, mm -hmm. at least you'll be challenged to put something on farm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so um, as you're saying, you're, you've been talking to... Um, women and youth um, in the um, that they should actually embrace agriculture. Have you received any positive response, or how has been the reception on this kind of message? Yeah. Absolutely. When you work with people specifically on issues of markets, they will be interested because they will see they will see the mm -hmm. the value for it. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, it's youth, women, mm -hmm. older people, and older people to be challenged yeah. to grow. Even if you are not going for the market, then be able to produce you for your own. Because mm -hmm. we're seeing uh, issues of food is be increasingly become a, becoming a great concern for many people. Mm -hmm. We're seeing food being produced in sewages and uh, mm -hmm. in very deplorable conditions. So mm -hmm. people are becoming more conscious of the kind of food they eat. Mm -hmm. So people are even getting trusting the food they are produced by themselves. Yeah. yeah so we're seeing a lot of positive interest for those specifically who are interested in uh, mm -hmm. Those, if you link them to markets specifically, if they are mapped out clearly, they have a lot of interest and uh, mm -hmm. people are getting into it. And as I mentioned, one of the biggest challenges was a farmer who will earn my salary, in monthly salary, in a week. Wow. And yet I was a very senior person, I was not a junior person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, now maybe we could talk about uh, regulation of the industry because now you're seeing, of course, the concerns of you know, food being grown in sewages. Are there certain laws that actually regulate the field of agribusiness or the growing of crops? Mm -hmm. there, there are a lot of laws that are coming into play mm -hmm. that have been in existence also. Mm -hmm. Looking at the Seed Act, which I think is a 316, mm -hmm. there are a lot of laws that regulate how food is grown in this country, mo moving from the seed mm -hmm. all the way up to the markets. Mm -hmm. And also county governments are also introducing their regulations in terms of how well, specifically for potatoes, one of the biggest challenges has been the extended bags. Mm -hmm. So that a farmer, when the trader comes, and we call them in the term middlemen, when they come to purchase, mm -hmm. they are charged per bag. Mm -hmm. And so for a bag that earlier should be 50 kgs, they, they stitch them until it becomes over 100, or almost up to 200 kgs a bag, and mm -hmm. the farmers get a very minimal amount of that. Mm -hmm. So we are having a lot of organizations coming into play to regulate issues of packaging, yeah issues of seed production and uh, to ensure that the value chain operates efficiently. Mm -hmm. We have KFIS, which is a big regulator on issues of seed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, HCD also, which is a government institution working on issues of horticultural crops. And each and every value chain, I think, has a, has a particular di di directorate that manages how that particular crop is, mm -hmm. is controlled. Wow. Wow. Um, now on the management, actually, because now the issue we have been seeing seeing actually in Kenya is that some of the major companies, for example, let me talk about 
the sugar industry we've been seeing um the i mean kenya used to produce a lot of sugar right and then now it was ran down you know um what is your general perception about the industries that regulate actually the production of crops because we've seen a lot of also maize candles coffee scandals or tea scandals so what is your general perception yeah i'm glad you, you asked my general perception yes of course <laughs> so it's just my own thoughts yeah yeah i've been working in the, in the region of kakamega for quite some time mm -hmm. over two years now mm -hmm. and i've been one of the biggest defenders of talking to farmers to move from sugarcane production to high value crops mm -hmm. whether it's when working with Weltunga well hilfe in uh, mm -hmm. sweet potato for farmers to move from uh, growing of sugarcane to get into sweet potato. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of those people that you could say are uh, disrupting the region in terms <laughs> of what is ideally been grown there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Talking to farmers also to move from sugarcane to passion fruit, which is a high value crop and mm -hmm. uh, various other crops. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have very good laws in place, mm -hmm. but I think we failed in terms of enforcement and that's my general perception. Mm -hmm. And we keep on updating the laws, but we are not doing so well in terms of how those laws are enforced. Yeah. So as a result, the, the value chains keeps on struggling. And uh, I think people develop laws, so they mm -hmm. picture how they are going to benefit from that law and yeah. they work around it. So sure. not really looking at the farmer. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that increasingly the government and other partners mm -hmm. are looking at farmers are very important people in the value chain and stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So we are having a lot of farmers' inputs and what they Mm -hmm. generally would wish to see taking place being incorporated in agribusiness. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 really nice and encouraging that now that you've said that. And um now that you're talking to many farmers, you know, across the board, um, what is the general perception of farmers? You know, do they feel that they're getting value for what they're growing? Because sometimes you see some farmers actually uh, crying out that you know they're not getting value for what they're actually producing in their farms. Yeah, depending on how you did your value chain mapping, it will mm -hmm. affect how you will end up in the, in the value chain. Mm -hmm. Because if you plant, and the biggest problem I think with farmers sometimes as well, mm -hmm. is they look at what the neighbor does and they come and implement in the farm, which in the end doesn't turn out so well. Mm -hmm. You don't know which practice that the other person decided to use for the farm and you're using mm -hmm. a completely different practice. Mm -hmm. So what you get at the end of it is, uh, is a bit different. Mm -hmm. So we, for many farmers, and I will speak for myself, Mm -hmm. And for those that I've seen, they are reaping huge. If you specifically understand your market, mm -hmm. map it well, use the best practices in production, then you are assured of good returns. Mm -hmm. I think the good thing as well that is getting into agri, there's a lot of uh, insurance, crop insurance. Oh. Yeah, banking industries and microfinance institutions are coming in to support farmers because you understand the vagaries of nature. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are happening in, mm -hmm. in agri that will affect how you ultimately come out with the crop. So mm -hmm. insurance is becoming a big thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, farmers can be able to get those insurance premiums, and whatever happens to their crops, mm -hmm. there's a way that they can be able to be compensated. Wow, yeah. wow. That, that's really encouraging because you're saying um, sometimes people don't have the capital to actually invest. And uh, when you've talked about insurance, I think maybe people might be encouraged to actually try out, despite the enormous risks involved, especially the change of the weather patterns in Kenya has been a big issue, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned something about finance that I quickly wanted to chip in. I've written a lot on issues of finance, uh -huh. part of it in my master dissertation and also uh -huh. a number of articles I've written on access to finance. Uh -huh. And because it affected me personally, uh -huh. yeah, I was working, yes, and I tried to access finance. Some of these things you tell young people, like the, which are good avenues have been created for them to access financing, whether it's banking industry, whether it's a youth enterprise development fund. There are many ways that have been put in place for youth access, but it's still quite a big challenge. Mm -hmm. And for me, my personal experience was that where I got my money, because I was setting, I was we were growing up passion fruit, mm -hmm. quite a big acreage, mm -hmm. and uh, putting up the wires and the posts is quite an, an expensive venture. Mm -hmm. So around that time, I didn't have enough money. Try to access all these avenues. Even if I was going to access it, it was going to take quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I'm really promoting is specifically with young people because they do not have collateral, mm -hmm. so they cannot be trusted by any bank to be given money. Mm -hmm. Microfinance institutions cannot, cannot trust them to, to give them money. Mm -hmm. So looking at also informal sources of access to finance, mm -hmm. whether it's friends, mm -hmm. if you have a strong idea and you're able to sell it out to people who believe in the idea, mm -hmm. then you can be able to access financing for agri. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow.
Wow, wow, that's that's really important what you say because as we've said, sometimes the money is not there, but the idea is really selling. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe now we will talk about the future of agriculture in Kenya, considering that's um, an, a place that you're actively in, involved in. What do you see the future of agriculture in Kenya? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm Jeremiah. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm, doesn't mean I'm the biblical prophet. <laughs> <laughs> Neither are my parents prophet. I'm not a son of a prophet. Uh -huh. But uh, trying to picture out uh, mm -hmm. the future of agri, mm -hmm. I think the area of digital innovation is going to, be, to play a critical role in, in agri. Mm -hmm. I mentioned I planted a small size of potatoes that I was hoping to use it as seed for next year's gro growing. Mm -hmm. So it was a small size, almost around one acre. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally on Sundays I spend my time on the farm. Mm -hmm. So ideally this weekend I will have been on the farm spraying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I talked to you of a farmer who is doing 100 acres of potatoes. Mm -hmm. The amount of time I spend spraying a small one acre is the amount of time he spent spraying one acre because he is using digi digital innovations, oh, mm -hmm. using a drone to spray. And wow. he does it himself and he's quite a wealthy man. And uh, in a very short time, he's done when uh, mm -hmm. a smallholder farmer is really struggling to, <laughs> to work on a small farm. Yeah. So the issues around precision agriculture, mm -hmm. people knowing what exactly the soil needs to produce a particular quantity and giving the crop that particular need that, they, that the soil needs to produce that quantity is going to become a great thing. Mm -hmm. So that we don't just get into planting, whether it's maize over and over again, whether it's sugar cane over and over again. Mm -hmm. So looking at really how the soil looks like and uh, working around it so that it gives you the desired results. Mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of things that are going to play into agri. Mm -hmm. One of the things that people need to work on also, and I think there is a lot of growing concern in it, mm -hmm. is the issue of distribution. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, when the Kenya had something called a food shortage, mm -hmm. the deputy president came out and said what we have is distribution challenge. Mm -hmm. And you'll be shocked to understand that people die, a lot of people, millions die of hunger every year. Mm -hmm. But there is no food shortage in the world. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of food being produced in the world. Mm -hmm. But now that in some places we have excess that is wasted mm -hmm. and in some places there is none. Yeah. So if we're able to bridge the gap in terms of places where there is lack of food so they're able to access where there is, we have excess being produced, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to be a great area. And mm -hmm. we see a lot of development organizations and banks financing that line. Mm -hmm. Issue, pe people who are working al around the line of the distribution, distribution from mm -hmm. the farmer to the market. Wow. It's becoming a great concern. Wow, wow, that's really nice. And now if we talk about the Kenyan situation, how in the northern parts of Kenya there, is, there isn't, should I say there isn't much food or there isn't food at all? Maybe you could advise me, I, I could be you know, trolled for saying there isn't food at uh -huh. all. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the northern part of this country, we call it asal, mm -hmm. arid and semi-arid. Mm -hmm. So very few crops can be able to, to grow in such kind of environs. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that is really being promoted are, are around that se those areas mm -hmm. are issues dealing with livestock mm -hmm. because you have livestock that are a bit more resilient. Mm -hmm. And I think I didn't mention the other thing that is going to be playing a key role mm -hmm. in the future of agriculture is mm -hmm. issues of research. Mm -hmm. Because looking into ways that we can be able to produce in places that were traditionally being, not being grown on. Mm -hmm. Because as I mentioned, a lot of the productive land in Kenya mm -hmm. is being invested in flats and big houses. Mm. So we land for farming is becoming thinner and, and thinner. thinner so I think there's a, there an interest for a lot of research to see that places which are not productive, we mm -hmm. get crops that can be able to produce in those areas. Mm -hmm. Another very important thing I didn't mention is that uh, mm -hmm. I'm a strong defender of on-farm production. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of talk that youth, they cannot access land, but I'm a strong defender of on-farm on -farm production. And as I mentioned earlier, unless we are producing foods in laboratories, mm -hmm. then you need to, people need to get that. They need yeah. to get to the farm. Mm -hmm. So in future, if people are able to produce food in labs, I think it's better. People will be less dirty and they'll be <laughs> able to eat much mm -hmm. food. I don't, know, I don't know about the health concerns about that, but mm -hmm. I think it's something that will be coming up in the future. Yeah. But of course, you know, food that is grown organically beats all types of foods, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, because even I, uh, I've been seeing um, production of some certain types of medicines with some certain types of plants where you actually can take those plants themselves and you get healed naturally. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Yeah, something that we are promoting also working with vegetables. Mm -hmm. We are implementing a project in Kenya and Ethiopia, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, in partnership with World Vegetable Center. Mm -hmm. And all the most important thing about the vegetables, traditional vegetables that we are promoting, mm -hmm. some of them have a medicinal value, yeah. Yeah, which the farmers can, and all the people in general can be able to tap into the medicinal value of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. Uh, thank you so much, Rogito. And now we're moving to the final part of our discussion. Maybe you could just share your parting shot or your closing remarks, remarks on this. Yeah, thank you so much. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I'm not used to cameras and lights. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. So I've really been waiting for the uh -huh. parting shot moment. Uh -huh. You know, yes, yesterday we were hosting a dinner uh -huh. and we invited one of the speakers, Ezra Chiloba, to speak. Uh -huh. So I had the opportunity to Mm -hmm. as a part of the organizing committee to be mm -hmm. asked to talk to him to come to the event. Mm -hmm. So when he was doing his talk, he mentioned that we had also one of the speakers as Michael Yer, and he said, Michael Yer, I've seen you on TV. Mm -hmm. and then he mentioned as well that uh, mm -hmm. preparing for this event, I was invited by Jeremiah. I've never seen him. Then guys were joking, you, you've seen other, other people on TV, you've not seen Jeremiah on TV. Mm -hmm. Then he mentioned there are many kinds of TVs, WhatsApp TVs, YouTube TVs. <laughs> yeah, so uh -huh. the, I know that I'll I'll see you on YouTube TV. YouTube TV, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and because I'll be more on YouTube TVs now, mm -hmm. I have developed something we call the the four Ds mm -hmm. in agricultural success. Mm -hmm. And each of these Ds stands for the D that I scored in campus in first year and fourth year. Mm -hmm. I got four Ds, so mm -hmm. I've derived the four Ds from that. Mm -hmm. I learned there's a Ds is not a good thing to get, <laughs> but at least I scored all those grades from A to B, mm -hmm. apart from an F. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the First thing is that we need to dream big. Mm -hmm. yeah, you just need to dream. You need to have the idea and dream it big. Mm -hmm. Number two, you need to be determined mm -hmm. in whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Whether it's crop production or it's consulting, you need to be determined. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, and as you mentioned, mm -hmm. in Agri, there's a lot of risks. Mm -hmm. And to mitigate those risks, then you need to diversify. Yeah. And lastly, I, I am a Christian and I believe in the power of divinity, yeah. that God is uh, it's the ultimate source of everything. Yeah. Anytime I go into the farm and after planting, mm -hmm. I usually say I've done my best, now go do, do, do the rest. Mm -hmm. Even in, when I do my reports at work, after I've done, I've done, I say I've done my best. Mm -hmm. Now it's for God to be able to do the rest. Mm -hmm. and for those who are Christians, by the way, when the mm -hmm. Bible begins the story, the creation narrative, mm -hmm. you hear of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And God's commandment to Adam and Eve is for them to be the tiller of the land. Yeah. They were to be farmers, yeah. not lawyers. <laughs> or camera people or accountants. Mm -hmm. God's call to us is to be farmers. Yeah. So I hope you are challenged in yeah. whatever to you do mm -hmm. to at least plant something because that is God's mm -hmm. initial plan for mankind. Wow. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jeremiah. That was a very profound ending and I'm sure many people will remember this conversation and they'll actually take action as you've said because we need to eat. We can't stop eating and I'm a lover of food so oh. Now I'm challenged to actually grow my own food. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I come from the Abasamaro group. Mm -hmm. So it's no surprise that I work in the food sector. <laughs> but I really want to thank you for the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to interact. Mm -hmm. yeah, ma among the many big guests you've invited for these shows in the past, I'm grateful that I'm in that list. Yeah. And I hope that we challenge that all people must eat at all times. So mm -hmm. they need to do something in the agri-space. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. It was a pleasure having you today.